Hey gamers, welcome back to my uh, gaming channel, Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater. I'm your host, Mickey. Uh, decided to, uh, well, I, I didn't decide. I, I had problems uh, with the audio recording this video earlier. So what I'm doing is I'm re-recording sort of a brief introduction to each important scene in this uh, walkthrough, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, playing Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator, uh, case number eight. Uh, relics of the past and Ben Jordan it has been you know if you followed our adventure so far Ben Jordan had an encounter with one of the Knights of St. Anthony who tried to assassinate him with, and, and he was able to defend himself with the help of this professor friend PQJ professor Quentin Jones now he's on the on the go he's on the run uh, he's going to the coach and horses pub and where, where, what he's going to do there? He's going to meet. Um, <clears throat> he's going to meet Professor Quentin Jones. Um, there's a secret uh, code that he has to use. Uh, he has to order some food there from the bartender, and a special kind of uh, combination of food. And basically, use that food uh, in a. Um, there's a dumb waiter uh, near the bar. You'll you'll see. In, in very, very soon in the game, and he has to use that food to lift it up to the to the top of the, the room where, where Professor Quentin Jones is staying, and therefore he's going to basically um, be able to obtain a key, a silver key, from Professor Quentin Jones that will allow him to access uh, the room. So that's the mission for this video. Basically, where Ben has to. Ben has to uh, find the, the the right combination of food at the bar without getting too drunk. We've got to be careful because if he drinks too many beers, he will pass out. So we're going to continue on this adventure of looking for um, Professor Quentin Jones. Um, I decided to do these videos without a webcam because I just wanted to focus on the gameplay rather than my own ego, at least in for the time being until I get my, my my shit in order, so to speak. My shit together. Um, I'm going to go. Now we're going to the bartender, and we're going to talk to the bartender and um, continue our adventure. Uh, already in progress. Thanks for watching. And um, here we go. very atmospheric place you've got here. You won't find a better pub in all of London. Hey, 
Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? Tell me about yourself. My name's Seamus. As you can see, I'm the bartender. My job consists of serving drinks to customers, as well as lending an ear to your travels. If you like, I can also provide entertainment in the form of jokes. I'll keep that in mind. What can you tell me about this place? Coach and Horse has been here for as long as I can remember. In fact, my dad used to come here when I was a lad. I'm sure you're doing him proud by working here. I probably would be plenty proud if he was still alive. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Of course you didn't, but 17 pints a day will do that to you. I'd like to think he helped keep this place in business. A touching thought. I'd like a drink, please. You came to the right place for it. What'll it be? Something to make me forget my problems. Ah, I got just a thing for you. Here you are, laddie. Hey Seamus, how about a joke? Certainly. Don't read this one to the kids. Three men are sitting at a bar. The first says, aye, this is a nice bar, but where I come from, there's a better one. At McDougal's, you can buy a drink, you can buy another drink, and McDougal himself will buy you a third drink. The second then starts, that sounds like a nice bar, but where I come from, there's a better one called Quinn's. At Quinn's, you can buy a drink, Quinn buys you a drink. You buy another drink, Quinn buys you another drink. Then the third pipes up, you think that's good? Where I come from, there's a place called Murphy's. At Murphy's, they buy you your first drink, they buy you your second drink, and they buy you your third drink, and then they take you in the back and get you laid. Well, say the other two, that sounds fantastic. Did that actually happen to you? No, replies their friend, but it happened to my sister. Hey Seamus, pour me another one of those drinks you gave me. One problem solver, coming right up. Here you are, laddie. Hey Seamus, how about a joke? Certainly. My good friend Simon enjoyed telling this one before he packed up and moved to America. A woman gets on the bus with her baby, and she pays for a ticket. The bus driver says, that's the ugliest baby I've ever seen. The woman says, I'm human. She says to the man next to her, the driver just insulted me. The man says, you shouldn't take that, you should tell him off. Go ahead, I'll hold your monkey. I'll take another problem solver if you don't mind. You're really enjoying these, aren't you? Here you are, laddie. See you later. Take care, laddie.
Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? Hey Seamus, how about a joke? Certainly. My good friend Simon enjoyed telling this one before he packed up and moved to America. A man is beating down a narrow mountain road when a woman comes hurtling around the corner. He swerves to avoid it, but as she passes, she leans out the window and screams, PIG! Shocked, the man turns and yells back, BITCH! as he reaches the bend and crashes into a pig. Hey. Hey, Seamus. Hi. Give me another one of those drinks. Is that really a good idea? You seem a bit off your tits already. I'm paying you, aren't I? Get it over. I can't argue with that logic. Here you are, laddie. Poor bastard. Had more problems than liquor could solve, it seems. This is a very atmospheric place you've got here. You won't find a better pub in all of London. Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about this place? Coach and Horse has been here for as long as I can remember. In fact, me dad used to come here when I was a lad. I'm sure you're doing him proud by working here. I probably. He'd be plenty proud if he was still alive. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Of course you didn't, but 17 pints a day will do that to you. I'd like to think he helped keep this place in business. A touching thought. Tell me about yourself. My name's Seamus. As you can see, I'm the bartender. My job consists of serving drinks to customers, as well as lending an ear to your travels. If you like, I can also provide entertainment in the form of jokes. I'll keep that in mind. I'd like a drink, please. You came to the right place for it. What'll it be? Something to make me forget my problems. Ah, I got just a thing for you. Here you are, laddie. Hey Seamus, how about a joke? Certainly. Don't read this one to the kids. Three men are sitting at a bar. The first says, aye, this is a nice bar, but where I come from, there's a better one. At McDougal's, you can buy a drink, you buy another drink, and McDougal himself will buy you a third drink. The second then starts. That sounds like a nice bar, but where I come from, there's a better one called Quinn's. At Quinn's, you can buy a drink, Quinn buys you a drink. You buy another drink, Quinn buys you another drink. Then the third pipes up. You think that's good? Where I come from, there's a place called Murphy's. At Murphy's, they buy you your first drink. They buy you your second drink, and they buy you your third drink, and then they take you in the back and get you laid. Well, say the other two, that sounds fantastic. Did that actually happen to you? No, replies their friend, but it happened to my sister. See you later. Take care, laddie.
Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about that room upstairs? Ah, yes. It's not much, but we rent that room out. I'm afraid you're out of luck if you need a place to stay, though. The room was empty until just this morning, when someone hired it for the week. Rats. Who rented the room? Funny that. I'm not sure. It's a man. That much I know. He rang us and reserved a room this morning. Even though I've been here all day, I can't recall anyone showing up to take the key. But then, there are large portions of today I can't remember, so I'm not too much concerned. How do you know anyone is up there? Because it keeps place with food orders. And you haven't seen him when he comes down to order food? That's the thing. He's been using the dumb waiter. He sends down a note with his order, but at the bottom it always says expecting guests. Waits until arrival. So I haven't made any of his three orders yet. What is your upstairs guest ordered? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant, with a side of quiche and juice to drink. Next, he asked for pie, with roast quail and jellies for dessert. Finally, he ordered prawns, quesadilla, and jaffa cakes. Strange. You're telling me we don't even serve half of this stuff. What is your upstairs guest ordered? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant. Next, he asked finally. Strange. You're telling me we don't even serve half of this stuff. I'd like to place an order for some food. Ah, of course. You get a main course, a side dish, and a dessert. What will you have? I'll take a shepherd's pie. and a side of french fries. And some ice cream for dessert. All right, laddie. Won't be a moment. There you are. Thanks. Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? What is your upstairs guest ordered? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant, with a side of quiche and a juice to drink. Next, he asked pie, with roast quail and jellies for dessert. Finally, he ordered prawns, quesadilla, and jaffa cakes. Strange. You're telling me we don't even serve half of this stuff. What is your upstairs guest ordered? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant, a side of quiche, and a juice to drink. Next, he asked pie, with roast quail and jellies for dessert. Finally, he ordered prawns, a quesadilla, and jaffa cakes. Strange. You're telling me we don't even serve half of this stuff. I'd like to place an order for some food. Ah, of course. You get a main course, a side dish, and a dessert. What will you have? I'll take a shepherd's pie.
with a side of Jaffa cakes. And I'll skip the dessert, thanks. All right, laddie, won't be a moment. There you are. Thanks. You got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? See you later. Take care, laddie. Have you got some time to answer a couple of questions? Talk is cheap. Alcohol isn't. What do you want to know? What is your upstairs guest order? Let me see. His first order was for pheasant. Next, he asked pie with roast quail and jellies for dessert. Finally, he ordered prawns, a quesadilla, and jaffa cakes. Strange. You're telling me. We don't even serve half of this stuff. I'd like to place an order for some food. Ah, of course. You get a main course? Side dish and a dessert. What will you have? I think I'll try a blood sausage. With a side of Jaffa cakes. And I'll skip the dessert, thanks. Alright, laddie. Won't be a moment. There you are. Thanks.
Why, Mr. Jordan, what a pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise? <laughs> Only joking. I knew you would find your way up here soon enough. Wasn't it kind of dangerous sending the key down like that? Anyone could have come up. I would have been most impressed if anyone who was not you had managed to figure out my food code. Thanks, I think. At any rate, feel free to make yourself at home. My apologies for the sparse decorations, but I had very little time to set up. I'm glad you're able to keep such high spirits during all this. Oh, someone has to, Mr. Jordan. Otherwise, why bother carrying on? You have no idea how often I've been asking myself that today. You sure can land on your feet. Adaptability is a very important skill to have. You of all people should know this. Um, Percy? Yes, Mr. Jordan? No more questions for now. As you wish. Um, Percy? Yes, Mr. Jordan? I couldn't help but notice your decorative plate from Romania. Ah, yes, I was hoping you would. That plate is a souvenir from a memorable trip I took there once. It was during my younger days, when I travelled through Europe. No kidding. My grandfather did the same thing when he was young. Yes, I know. Hold on. Are you telling me you knew my grandfather? Yes. Arthur and I were good friends. We travelled to Romania together. How come he never mentioned you? Oh, I wouldn't have expected him to. We had a bit of a falling out later on. But Grandpa Arthur went to Romania in the 1920s. Were you even born then? I'm not as young as I look, Mr. Jordan. If you'll have a seat, I can tell you about it. Do we really have time for stories? You have done all you can for now, and I feel this is something you should know. Okay. Now then, I met your grandfather in London in the early 1920s at this very pub. A mutual interest in travel and adventure meant that we quickly became friends. We travelled many places together and in 1926 found ourselves in a small Romanian village. This particular adventure was significant not only for your grandfather, but for you as well. I'm listening. Scenic little town, isn't it? Indeed, quite atmospheric. Did you know this is where Bram Stoker took his inspiration for Dracula? Count Vlad Tepes, the man who inspired Dracula, was supposedly born in this very town. Of course, he was better known as Vlad the Impaler. Always a source of fascinating trivia, aren't you, Percy? I do like to keep myself informed. Right now, the only information I need is the location of the closest hotel. We've been traveling a long time, I'm beat. Yes, a good night's sleep sounds wonderful. Don't suppose you can read Romanian? A bit, actually. But I'm sure there has to be a hotel around here somewhere. The town isn't very big. Let's take a look around, then. 